is time for, if you ask me, the most important video on my channel, my speed reviews, makeup updates, where I go through everything that I've been trying and everything that I feel comfortable giving you my thoughts on after using them multiple times. If you notice anything missing, it just means I'm not ready to give that final review on, but all of these are, you know, the final stamp for my thoughts on these babies. We have 26 items in today's video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I do these every couple of weeks just to keep updating you on everything that I've been trying. Let's go ahead and get into face primers. I have two to share with you. So the first is from Makeup Forever. This is the Step 1 Primer Hydro Booster. I think this is a really great primer prior to makeup, especially if you have dry skin. Now it's not gonna be as deeply hydrating as a moisturizer, but it's that perfect, you know, you've had some time after applying your morning moisturizer and it's kind of settled down. You still want that extra layer of hydration. This is really good. I think Makeup Forever did a really nice job with this. So if you have dry skin, even oily skin, I think this will work great for because it is a thinner moisturizing feeling. So yeah, if you're looking for a pretty lightweight moisturizing primer, I think Makeup Forever did a really great job and it creates a great canvas prior to makeup. It doesn't make the skin sticky or anything. If you don't like that, I know some people do like that, but it really gives a very smooth canvas which actually helps the foundation kind of spread a little quicker and easier so been enjoying this for my skin type. Next up, I have this item from Fenty. This is the Ease Droplet All Over Glow Enhancer. You can pretty much do whatever you want with this. Use it as a base primer, use it as a liquid highlighter, mix it into any foundations to make them more glowy. Unfortunately, I'm not in love with this product. It's kind of meh. It really doesn't do too much. I think it looks pretty good on its own over the skin if you do want something kind of glowy on the skin or if you're wearing a super lightweight tinted moisturizer, this could also do well, maybe just a little bit of concealer in this. So this does leave a glowy base, but in terms of pairing it with makeup, layering with it, it doesn't really do too much. The second you have something with coverage on, this doesn't really add much to the skin. I find when I mix this in with other products, this soaks right into the coverage and really doesn't do too much but it looks pretty on bare skin. So if you're the type of person that wants that glow, it's not really wearing anything with coverage, I think you will enjoy this. For me, I like my coverage too much. Even when I apply this under my skin all over before makeup, the makeup completely covers it. So it's not really of use to me, but I think there definitely is a group of people who will enjoy this. And I have mine, by the way, in the shade Taffy Topaz. I have two base complexion foundation-y products. So the first one is from L'Oreal. Totally forgot to put this in my most recent monthly favorite. I think I will next month. This is a L'Oreal H Perfect Tinted Balm. I stick by what I originally said. This is what the Jones Road Foundation Balm whatever should have been. This is not overly oily. It doesn't leak. It doesn't separate. It sits on the skin beautifully. It doesn't stay sticky throughout the day and it really just gives an overall better look to the skin while being very very natural. If you're somebody who doesn't want too much coverage, I think you will really enjoy this. It's a, it's a much better price point than the Jones Road foundation and it works much better in my opinion as well. It is deeply hydrating. I don't have anything bad to say about this product. If you're looking for something that's just really lightweight, glowy, that's just gonna take your skin up to the next level but still keep it very natural, this is perfect. I highly, highly, highly recommend this if you're into that type of product. Particularly dry skin girls, you're gonna be obsessed with this. Okay, next up. I've worn this foundation so much in so many different ways to try and get it to work. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I, I give this so many chances because to be quite frank, I was really excited about this and anytime I wore this product, I did not like the way my skin looked. Unfortunately, this foundation is not my friend. It is definitely a foe. It works best when you apply as little foundation as possible. I found that when I applied, I would say like my normal amount of foundation, it was just kind of sitting on top of the skin. You could tell I was wearing makeup. It didn't do my skin any favors, didn't really look any better. When I applied lesser layers, it did look better, but it's still just didn't look good and smooth on my skin. It begins to separate the longer you wear it and it separates a lot sooner than a lot of other complexion products that I have. I do not like the powder as well. I find no matter where I put this powder over what, it does not look good. I've tried using this powder over other foundations to see if it was just the foundation, how they work separately. This powder does not make my skin look good. It sits on top of the skin. It enhances dryness. It's just not the product for me, unfortunately. It does 
not doing my skin any favors and it does not wear well either so unfortunately I do not enjoy this one. I have three concealers so the first one is from Too Faced. This is the Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer. I like this concealer. I don't love it. It has a glowy finish. It gives like a light to medium coverage. I much prefer the original Born This Way however that one is very different. It has more of a matte finish. It has more of a fuller coverage compared to this. This one's just definitely more natural and sheer and I think when you use it like that it is very beautiful if that's what you are looking for. It really isn't the type of concealer that I'm personally looking for so I'm not going to reach for it. But in terms of performance it does a nice job if you want a light to medium coverage with a glowy finish. It does not wear amazing but it wears just fine. It is a slightly above average concealer if you ask me. So I don't find myself reaching for this a lot but I don't not enjoy it. I'm very happy having it in my collection for certain days and certain makeup applications. The next one is one that I've been excited to update you guys on. This is a Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. So I like this so much more than the concealer that Charlotte Tilbury has had in her line for a long time. I really hated that concealer to be honest. I do not hate this concealer. However, I don't really like this concealer. There's nothing really amazing about it. When I wear it, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it enough to not want to grab for it. If it's near me, I'll put it on. I have a really nice brightening color as well, but it doesn't wear as well or look as natural as some other concealers. So this one also has a glowy finish like the Too Faced Born This Way, but I feel like the Born This Way has a little bit of a smoother finish compared to the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not bad. I'm happy to have it because I do a lot of full face videos of Charlotte Tilbury and I actually have a concealer now that I don't despise. So I'm happy to have this in terms of being a makeup reviewer and doing full faces of Charlotte Tilbury, but how it stands up compared to the rest of my concealer collection. I'm really not that impressed, especially for the price point, so I won't go out of my way to necessarily recommend this to you guys, but the performance is okay, and I feel like if you buy it, it's good enough to hold on to, but once you run out, it's not one that I plan on picking up again, so that's kind of where I stand about this. It's just plain old average. And then the last concealer that I have, I've been testing a lot of concealers recently. This is from Sephora Collection. This is the Best Skin Ever Full Coverage Multi-Use Concealer. Totally trying to dupe the original Too Faced Born This Way concealer, but the Too Faced is much better because this one is a little bit too thick. It looks a little thick on the under eyes. It doesn't do any favors to the under eyes. Like I said, it looks a little thick and cakey. You can see that makeup sitting on there. It just doesn't have that smooth finish that I like my concealers to have. It kind of cakes up after I put powder on top. So yeah, this one just doesn't sit very nicely on the under eyes. I think it works better as kind of spot concealer or applying it around the face area, but I don't love it on the under eye area. And then I've done a whole dedicated video on this. I featured this in a haul. I've done shorts on this. I'm really excited about this trio over here. So Melania launched three products in these packaging and the first one that we have is the under eye brightener. I have mine in the shade number two melon. I really like this as a color corrector. It has a very nice natural light coverage. You can see it has somewhat of a glowy finish and it feels very hydrating under the eyes. So if you are looking for a natural color corrector, this is beautiful, beautiful. You can't even tell really that it is a drugstore product. I think they knocked it out of the park with this. It's good on its own if you want something really soft, but it also is just light enough and hydrating enough to have underneath a concealer as well. So normally I'm a proponent of the less layers on the under eye, the better, but I'll make an exception for this one. Then we also have the liquid contour. So I have mine in the shade 2 Ginger, which is going to be more of a bronzer color. I believe there is a lighter shade that's a little bit more cool that I'm interested in trying out, but I think this is a really great liquid highlighter from the drugstore. It doesn't blend out as easily as I would like, but it's not that hard to work out. Anyways, you can still work it out. It just doesn't blend as smooth as some of my other favorite liquid contours, but I did a whole video comparing this to the Charlotte Tilbury if you want to see how those match up. The Charlotte Tilbury is almost a little bit more watery whereas this one has more thickness to it but it still blends out pretty easy. I think Milani did a good job with this. This is a good affordable option if you are looking for a liquid contour slash bronzer. And then the last one in the trio here is the liquid highlighter in the shade number one Lunar. This is right up my alley. I hate 95% of the liquid highlighters that I've ever tried and this is one that I enjoy. It is on the softer side and I think that's why I 
like it, but it really does blend in seamlessly with the face makeup that I have on. Even if I have on powder, this applies beautifully over top. Now it is very natural. Again, I compared this to the Charlotte Tilbury liquid highlight. The Charlotte Tilbury is much more metallic. This one, very, very soft, but very beautiful. Blends in to be one with the skin. So if you're looking for a really high quality liquid highlighter that's still natural, can go over powder, this one is really good. Overall, this whole trio I am super impressed with. As I've continued to wear these products, I continue to be more and more obsessed with them. These are definitely going to be drugstore products that I recommend in my drugstore recommendations videos in the future because they really are of a high quality. Let's get into my one set powder that I have other than the Patrick Ta. This is the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. Truthfully, I don't love this as a powder foundation. I've been using it more so as a setting powder because it does have a thinner, more dry feel that I don't like my powder foundations to have. When I use powder foundations, I prefer them to feel a little bit more thick and creamy. I don't love it as a setting powder, but I don't dislike it either. I find that it doesn't look as good very quickly. So whenever I first apply this, I like the way that it looks on the the skin. It looks blurring, it looks lightweight, you can't really see it, but I find literally two minutes and suddenly my skin looks a little bit more dry so it doesn't hold up to how it looks when you first apply it. All it takes is literally one minute and it's a bit more on the drier side. I just have a lot of other powders that I enjoy at this price point more, which is crazy because I've dealt with a lot of bad quality drugstore powders. This is not in that <laughs> category at all. This is kind of just middle of the line. This is in my head how I would think a powder foundation of this price point would act. It's nothing special to me. So yeah, I don't really recommend it. It's not bad. I'm going to continue to use it, but once it's expired, I'm probably not going to repurchase it. Next up, I have this little duo from Beauty Blender. This is the Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlight Duo. I like this product. I don't love it. So how it works is you twist it and you have a cream bronzer. Now this cream bronzer is very, very very emollient. You only need to use a light hand when picking up this product. If you dig a brush in or you dig your sponge in, you're probably going to take out more than you need. So less is best when it comes to this guy right here. It is more of a warm color. Well, I have the shade Champagne Highlight and Topaz Bronzer, but I really like this. It's more wet than the cream bronzers that I'm used to right now. I'm used to them being a little bit more kind of a cream to powder. This one is more of a true creamy consistency and it's going to stay really Really creamy. I think it's really nice. I've enjoyed my time with this, but what I'm not in love with is this putty highlight at the top. It's not really easy to be seen, and that might just be because it's quite close to my skin tone, but I'm not a big fan of the whole putty highlight situation here. It definitely works. It leaves behind a very subtle highlight. It doesn't break up the makeup, which is the thing that I'm looking for the most, so I will use it if I reach for the bronzer. I'm never going to reach for this highlight alone. I'm not going to go, oh, Oh, I want to use my beauty blender highlight but if I am reaching for the cream bronzer which I will reach for individually then I'll be like okay I'll just use the highlight so it's a solid okay it's kind of like a if it's on sale I'd recommend it I have one powder bronzer this is the L'Oreal infallible bronzer in the shade light medium what a solid solid bronzer from the drugstore the drugstore has some really nice bronzers this is very smooth it carries more pigment than I'm used to with a lot of bronzers honestly but it has a very smooth application a beautiful color selection, blends on like a high quality bronzer. So if you don't wanna break the bank on a bronzer, I do recommend looking into these. What's different about this than some of my other favorite bronzers is it is a little bit more powdery, so you do get some kickback. If you do not tap off your brush, you'll probably get too much color circulated into one area here and you have to put in a little extra work to blend it out. So as long as you tap off your brush and kind of lightly spread it along the outsides of, of your face, it's going to be lovely. But there was a very, very easy learning curve to get over. But now that I know, I'm good to go. It's a beautiful product. The last face product that I have today is from Laura Mercier. This is the Blush Color Infusion in Peach Shimmer. So they launched, I believe it was only three glowy cheek products and one was a highlight. This one is a shimmery blush. It's very, very subtle. I'd love to see them come out with this formula in more bold colors, but this is absolutely gorgeous for an everyday glowy cheek. I've been enjoying it very much. I think if you have a deeper complexion, it's also going to look really good 
as a highlight. For natural makeup days, this is perfect. I love the golden sheen that it has. It's not too overpowering. It's not unflattering. It's not showing off too much texture considering that it is a glowy product. So if you're looking for something subtle, peachy, shimmery with the beautiful Laura Mercier cheek quality, I've been enjoying this a lot. I find myself reaching for it more than I thought I would. Moving on to eyes, very, very small amount here, just two products. So we have the new one size point made liquid liners in two new colors. So they have a black, I like the black, but I didn't expect to like these as much. I almost gave these away, but then I ended up keeping them and I'm really enjoying these colors. So there's a brown color in busty brown and then a navy color in bossy blue. Now I'm more often reaching for the brown color. I've been using it a ton when I do natural kind of everyday brown looks, especially because I've been wearing the new Too Faced chocolate palette and the pumpkin spice palette. This looks really good with those types of palettes. So I've been using this a lot. Don't underestimate a brown liner. It's not as intense as black, but it really does allow you to kind of shape the eye. Highly recommend this color. And then I actually have on right now Bossy Blue. I'm not reaching for this one as much, but I think it's really pretty. And again, a navy is underrated. If you have blue eyes, try it out with a navy liner. I think it will make your blue eyes pop. And I do enjoy the one size eyeliner quality. I don't necessarily love the applicator. It's a bit too long for me and a little bit too flimsy. So it's not the perfect applicator for me and my eye shape, but I make it work. And I think the actual quality of the product that's inside here is very nice, lasts a long time, doesn't smudge. And I think it's fun that we're messing around with these kind of colored eyeliners. Now they're not super colorful. They're still pretty neutral, but they're very nice, not too outside of my comfort zone, but still something different from the black. And then the last eye product I have is a mascara from Makeup Forever. This is the Professional Mascara. It is a two-step mascara system. So step one is for lift. And then it has kind of a smaller spoolie. And then step two is for volume. I'm not in love with this. Now keep in mind, I am quite picky with mascaras. I do have quite short, sparse, thin lashes. So it takes a special mascara for me to enjoy. The step one lift does absolutely nothing for my lashes. It looks like I just made my lashes a little blacker, but everything else literally looks the same. I don't see any lift going on. The only difference I see is when I use the volume, it helps, it plumps my lashes, but it doesn't really do necessarily anything Thing special that another mascara can't do so I'm not obsessed with this doesn't do much for me but my lashes are one of a kind so take that with a grain of salt and we have quite a large lip category I've been messing around with some different lip products that I'm excited to talk about this first one is a great affordable one from elf this is the ride or die lip balm in the shade tough cookie I love applying this after I put on my foundation because you know when you have foundation on your lips this adds just the right amount of color it is hydrating to the lips it doesn't last too long but it's a perfect kind of natural lip tone colored lip balm it has some thickness to it so it is gonna stay longer than your average lip balm this is great to keep in your purse the biggest caveat I have with this is the application it literally is an actual tube so it's kind of hard to control the amount of product you get out you can't really just put it straight on the lips you have to put it on your finger if you apply too much it kind of globs on your lips so I don't like the application of this it's not really that easy but the product itself is really nice to have on hand or in your purse it's been right on my makeup desk so I've been using it a lot for those foundation lip situations since I am on camera with my makeup half done that's been perfect I also have a new lip oil this is from Jaclyn Cosmetics now I have had prior experience with her lip oils but this is the first one I tried in this color, Maple Drip. This is right up my alley. I think she has a very beautiful formula. It has just the right amount of pigmentation in that, you know, it's still a sheer lip oil, but I really like this color because it adds the color back onto my lips to kind of just go with any neutral lip liner and then you pop this on the lips and your lips look juicier, they feel more hydrated. It's a thicker formula so it lasts a long time. It's similar to I would say like the Dior formula. It's a really nice solid high quality lip oil so if you are looking into these I do recommend them and it's very deeply hydrating and it leaves a nice gloss for a pretty long time. It's one of the longer wearing lip oils so I enjoy that. And then I have three lip oils from the BT21 collection with ColourPop 
Pop. This collection, you can't get a hold of it really anymore, so I'm not gonna talk too much about these. But these are fun colors. Now, I enjoy the ColourPop lip oils in that they're affordable, but they're not the highest of quality lip oils that I've ever used. They're quite liquidy. You know, they aren't gonna have that stick and long wear that the Jaclyn Cosmetics does, but these do hydrate the lips and they do add a nice temporary gloss. My favorite shade is Mighty Squad. This one makes you look like you have popsicle lips. It's almost like Asian makeup. It's very popular in Asia for you to have that popsicle lip. This one is perfect and it lightly hydrates. I'm not as big of a fan of the glittery one, but BFFs, the peachy one, and this one, the popsicle one, is really, really nice. So I've been enjoying these ColourPop lip oils just to have in my purse because they're cheap. I'm not worried about losing them or anything happening to them, but they're not the highest quality, but they're still very nice. I have this new lip product from Laura Mercier. This is the Petal Soft Lipstick in the shade Amelie. Honestly, it doesn't do much. It doesn't have enough impact for me. I think it is great for somebody who really is not a makeup wearer, just wants something to kind of brighten up the lips very naturally. This is quite a sheer product. It kind of softens the look of the lips, but honestly, I don't find it to be the most flattering It doesn't make the lips look hydrated or anything. It just kind of sits there You know this very sheer layer of color it doesn't really do too much for me I, I don't find myself reaching for this too terribly often. I can definitely see a t type of person who would reach for this It's not really me though <laughs> But if you know of somebody who just doesn't really wear too much makeup But likes to have something to put on their lips. That's quite natural. I think they will like that, but it really doesn't have, in my opinion, the most flattering look on the lips either. I'd almost recommend the e.l.f. over the Laura Mercier. They're completely different, obviously. The e.l.f. gives you a glow, but I find the glow more flattering than this one because it kind of makes the lips look powdery dry. So I am so late on this, but I can finally talk about the Christian Audette and Tara Lynn lipstick collaboration. There's also a lip gloss, but I've mostly been using the lipstick. I accidentally had this sent to my old address, so I couldn't use it, but finally it was rerouted to my current address. So this is the Bare Nectar, and I feel like she managed to create the perfect kind of peachy shade. It goes with almost every look. It's the perfect summer lip. It goes with almost every lip liner and it looks really good when you apply just a little bit no matter how crazy your eyes are it looks really good just a nice versatile color Tara did a phenomenal job picking out this color I mean I even watched her video where she explained what kind of color she was looking for what the goal was and she definitely achieved that so I mean it's just an overall solid color it's been like one that's very easy to grab for that goes with a lot of makeup looks so I am mad about it I have this lip duo from ColourPop. This is from the Jasmine Chiswell collection. She launched three. This is the only one that I've worn day to day. This is the Old Flame Duo. It comes with Sex Appeal Lipstick and Beverly Bungalow Lippy Pencil. Didn't think I would reach for this, but it really created a thoughtless red lip. There was a couple days this month where I wanted to wear a red lip, and I liked that this one was already curated for me. I mean, I really love these formulas from ColourPop. The only thing to note is the lipsticks. While as creamy as they are, they aren't going to last the longest, but I don't care because I really like them and they're cheap. And this created a really nice everyday red lip. I love the duos that Jasmine Chiswell created. These are great, super efficient, very quick lip colors that you don't have to think about and this was a beautiful flattering red and then I also had this lipstick set which has been sitting in my drawer and I finally want to talk about it and why it's been sitting in my drawer this is the luxe lipstick vault from ColourPop in True Love's Kiss and it came with a variety of different shades and I thought originally I was going to love this because I love the ColourPop lipstick formula they're very high quality very affordable you just need to know you're gonna have to reapply Apply. But the colors in here weren't as amazing as I had originally thought they were gonna be. They're a bit too bold for me. I like them a little bit more on the nude side. This set has a lot more reds and deep shades than I had anticipated. I have been using Pocahontas and Mulan the most. They're a little bit more on the neutral side, but they are still quite 
right. Right now, currently, I have the shade Princess Aurora on. This is kind of a pretty pinky color. But online, I thought the swatches of this lip collection looked absolutely stunning. But I really don't find myself reaching for these colors. And it's a bit much, you know. There's a lot of lipsticks in this set. So I don't recommend it as much anymore because I don't find the shades to be more to my taste. Now, it depends, obviously, what your tastes are. But I will say, when I looked at the swatches online, all of the lipsticks looked really wearable and beautiful. But in person, they're just a bit much because I'm an eyes person. I like to play around with my eyeshadows. So normally, I need more of a neutral kind of lip. None of these are neutral, so I didn't reach for them very often. But if you're more of a lip person, then maybe I'd recommend that if you like something more bold because the colors are quite rich. They're just nice. You can see by my swatches, but they're not my nudie peach that I like. So I reached for those a lot less than I thought, but my thoughts still stand on the ColourPop lipsticks that I think they're very good quality and definitely worth the price. So I also have been using this Makeup Forever Rouge Artist Forever Matte <laughs> Lipstick in Endlessly Blushed. It is a matte lipstick. It's a decent formula. It is very thin. They actually just recently sent me a PR package where I have a lot more shades to play with. But it's a solid liquid lipstick. I wouldn't say it goes above and beyond all of the liquid lipstick formulas that I've tried, but I've enjoyed it. I really like the applicator on this. I love the color that I have as well. If you're looking for something long wear, this is decent. It's not the longest wearing, but I'd rather it be less long wearing and not as drying. And that's what this is to me. But I normally like to have a gloss with this though because I do like that added hydration but I really like the colors that they have as well it's a solid liquid lipstick it's kind of like I didn't really need it because we all well because I have so many liquid lipsticks I suppose I can't speak for you on this but it's not necessarily an exciting launch but it's solid it's, it doesn't stand out in their line but I'm not mad about it and then the last item that I have this is from the opal of my eye collection from ColourPop the celestial kind of lip glosses. So these are glitter glosses. They're very sheer and what makes them different from one another are the glitter undertones. The only thing that's kind of disappointing about these is the shiftiness of the glitters aren't as noticeable on the lips. You know, there's a pink and a blue. I can't really tell that I have the pink or the blue one on. But surprisingly, I've been reaching for these a lot because I do a lot of looks like this because I'm a glitter girl when it comes to eyeshadow. And I'm gonna put the blue one on right now. We're just gonna pack it on. And it's, like it's okay. The glitters don't give me what I want them to give me. I mean, I don't want pure glitter on my lips, but I would like more of a noticeable shift, right? I feel like these are more noticeable kind of on their own, but when you have a layer of other products underneath, like I have a lot of layers on my lips now after showing you guys, those products just eat up the shimmers in here so they're not as noticeable, but anyways. They're okay. You definitely don't need all three. You probably don't need any of them, but they're okay. Anyways, there we have it, you guys. I just reviewed 26 makeup items pretty fast, if I do say so myself. So if you guys enjoyed it, I'm happy I can now put all of these products in my collection because I've given you my final thoughts. Hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.